Today we're talking about spiritual algebra, um, and we're going to get to how to solve for you. Now, uh, the reason this came to me is because, or the way this came to me was, um, I wanted to teach my son algebra, and so naturally I decided, let me go back and, and relearn whatever the the basic principles are. And so on my way to doing that, I I learned that um, algebra, the word as we now have it, uh, came from a Persian polymath who wrote a book called The Compendious Book on Calculation by Completion and Balancing. Uh, and that word completion or uh, restoring in the Arabic was algebra. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it comes from the Arabic there. And so um, I was scratching my chin because I was like, well, I didn't know. I didn't know that, first of all. Um, but two, this book, to me, it sounds like a, a spiritual title, The Science of Restoring and Balancing or The Reunion of Broken Parts. Um, and so I started to just ponder from a spiritual perspective, what the the spiritual usefulness of algebra. Uh, and so when you break down the two words, restoring and balancing, uh, and how they play out in the book of restoring and balancing, um, the restoring side is moving a deficient quantity from one side of the equation to the other side. And I'm assuming that you know um, basic algebra. You can, we'll get into it in a moment. Um, and then the balance inside, or the al mu kabbalah, al mu kabbalah, uh, is removing a positive quantity from both sides. So here's an example: we've got x squared equals 40x minus 4x squared, and so we're going to remove the deficient quantity, which is the negative 4x squared. Uh, and we're going to bring that over to the left side of the equation, and now it becomes 5x squared because it meets up with the x squared that was already there, and the 40x stays where it was. So repeated application of this rule, so doing this process, if this was a much more uh, bigger equation, um, doing this rule repeatedly would eliminate negative quantities from the calculation. All right. So just hold, keep that in mind. We'll get back to it in a moment. But the restoring is moving a deficient quantity from one side of the equation to the other side. Now, on the Mukabala side, we're removing a positive quantity from both sides. So really quickly, um, here we have x squared plus 5 equals 40x plus 4x squared. And so we're going to remove the x squared. So we're just left with a 5. Uh, we're also going to remove an x squared from this side. And now we just end up with 3x squared here. Right? So, again, doing this over and over again, uh, we end up with six types of solvable equations. So the whole point of this is to simplify our equations so that they can become solvable. Right? So what is the equation that we're talking about? Well, we want to solve for you. So we're talking about the equation of life. And in the equation of life, we have our outer world. I didn't write this down. But we have our outer world and we have our inner world. Um, and a lot of times it can get really complicated. Um, we have our X factor. That's what we're going to be solving for. Um, we're going to find our X factor. It lives inside of us, but it also sometimes lives in our outer world as well. And as we go through life, we accumulate things. We accumulate uh, experiences and uh, things that that basically just complicate our our understanding of our life and our reality and how that inner world um, impacts our outer world and how that they actually um, can potentially be restored and balanced, right? So, again, 
when I when I when I saw the title of the book, to me it, it read as a very spiritual title in this alternate translation of reunion of, of broken parts. To me, that sounded very redemptive, and so that led me to um, thinking about well, you know, if my life were an equation and I wanted to solve for x, what is the algebra for that? And it's the same. It's the same exact algebra. Um, same exact function, right? For figuring out who am I? What is my purpose? Who am I at my core? Because instinctively we know that if we can get to that core, if we can get to that purpose, there's a key that can now illuminate our world and allow us to make sense of how things have come to be and our ability to influence those things, right? And so in that, there is uh, restoration and balance, and I believe uh, that's where we find freedom. And so there's a quote that I used to say, it's in one of my raps, the same thing that you think you need, give it up and that same thing set you free. And that is a part of this function because in order to do this algebra, we have to th give up things that make up a part of our equation or that we uh, believe make up a part of our equation. So let's look at a quick example. Um, I haven't fully flushed this out, so we'll call this example number one or example A. Uh, and maybe we'll come back with an example B. But for now, here's a simple algebraic equation. 3x plus 4 equals 28. Um, we're not dealing with any powers or any, any uh, squares or anything like that. So what does this represent? So metaphorically, obviously, um, let's say that 3x plus 4 equals 28 is uh, an equation for our friends' opinions of us plus our boss's feedback. Let that represent 4. Um, and let 28 equal not where we want to be. So we want to isolate and we just want to get you by yourself. We want to get that. We want to figure out what that X factor is. Because if we could just figure out who we are, what we're equal to, then perhaps the three doesn't matter anymore. Perhaps the friend's opinions don't matter as much. And if we can just figure out this X, then maybe uh, the boss's feedback wouldn't matter as much. And maybe we would be somewhere else, right? So let's go through the first step. First, we're going to remove four. First, we're going to remove um, this positive four from both sides of the equation. Because maybe the boss's feedback was positive. But it's getting in the way of just figuring out us. So if we remove the boss's feedback, now we just now we're just left with perhaps our friends' opinions of us. We've still got to figure that out, um, and maybe now an idea of um, and where they want to be. They mean in you and your friends, right? There's a it's a collective, right? So now we're left with we've removed boss's feedback, and now we're just left with you and your friends' opinions and that's looking like where y'all want to be, but it doesn't look like where you want to be until we remove friends' opinions. And when we remove uh, friends' opinions from both sides of the equation, then now we're just left with you and where you want to be or where I want to be. Or let's <laughs> simplify that, All right? And so now when you're left with you and where you want to be, you could plug that back into our initial equation and that can restore and balance and give better perspective to where you've been because now you're actually not there anymore. Now, now you can be plugged in to some other part of your function and now you can activate your equation so that now it's, it's actually functioning. Um, and so this is just an example of, this uh, spiritual algebra in life where we're trying to isolate some aspect of ourself. And in order to do that, we have to remove um, aspects that weren't there originally. So circumstances, environments, people, 
um, that manifest in our outer world, um, once we remove them and remove the places or the things or whatever those things are, then we're now left with a a simpler equation that we have to solve. Uh, and once we solve for it, we can reintegrate into the original equation and, and friends and people or whatever. But now we're not a mystery to ourselves. And because we're not a mystery to ourselves, um, now it's clear how those other parts of the equation need to relate to you because now um, who you are is is now illuminated. So that is the spiritual algebra or at least the beginnings of it. Um, I would love to know what you think because when I did a Google search on this expression, spiritual algebra, um, I didn't find anything that reflected back this. So I'm curious if anyone else um, has had similar ideas or thoughts on the relation of uh, the very basic, simple uh, principles of algebra in relation to your spiritual life, your real life. Um, and when I say spiritual, I'm I'm talking uh, the the things that affect the causes of our of our reality in our world. So anyway, um, that's it. Again, leave a comment. Uh, I want to know what other people think about this. All right, peace.